the uh, sister D and Alex. You wanna just make your way up to the couch? I'm gonna get comfy. Oh, you're nice. Alright, so to my right, yeah, we got Alex. Uh, We're good. We got Zach. We got Zach Parnell and then Olivia, Sister D and Alex. So sorry, Alex. Um, so basically what I'm doing is we're just going to run through what life was like in year 9 and 10 for these guys and um, just see if we can relate, if anyone in the audience can relate or, you know, just see if... You know, we're just going to hear their stories and see if we can relate and um, take anything from them. So, what was life like for you in Year 9 and 10? Yeah, it um, feels like ages ago, but it's just yesterday, hey. Um, yeah, Year 9, uh, I remember there was this one kid in particular that used to, like, pick on me a bit. Like, he just used to, like, push me around or call me names or whatever, like, push me and then run away. I could never catch him. He was just that little bit faster than me. I remember going home one night and I was just, um, I was just telling my dad how much I just wanted to strangle this kid. Um, I didn't, because I couldn't catch him. Um, but my dad just sort of like sat me down and we're at the back, he was cooking on the barbecue um, and he heard, he heard what I was saying and he heard how frustrated I was um, and he just sort of shared that maybe there was more to it than what I could see. Um, he said, you know, you never know what's going on at home for this kid. And he said something about leadership, he said something, I'll, I'll never forget, forget it, he said, um, with leadership, you know, it's, it's lonely up the top, but the view is worth it. Um, I sort of took that to heart, and I, I continued to forgive him and let, let go of all the things that he did that just, you know, rattled me. Um, and eventually, you know, time went on, and we went our separate ways, and eventually we ended up being able to catch up for a, a drink sometime. Um, and he shared that what he was going through was, was pretty rough. You know, his, his family was quite abusive. Um, he had a lot of stuff going on. He was picked on quite a lot and, and even, like, physically abused. Um, and, and he said that, you know, I picked on you because I knew you had what it took and I knew that you wouldn't fight me back. Um, and he just sort of did it to sort of make him feel that little bit, that bit bigger. Um, and since then we've been able to catch up and support each other and encourage each other. Um, but I think if I had just lashed out and not, you know, taken the, the other path, if I hadn't have taken the narrow path, you know, I don't know what would have happened. So, yeah, I think um, year nine and ten was an interesting year because... Um, I sort of started to become a leader but couldn't really see the fruit until years later. And it was tough, but it was worth it. So um, I guess what you're kind of saying is that you can't really judge someone's book by just what they're doing. Like, you kind of have to delve a little bit deeper. Yeah, you never really know what's going on, you know, behind closed doors. You never know. You can't judge a book by its cover, you know, it's the same. Yeah, thank you, Zach. Not Alex. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. We're going to move on to Olivia. So Olivia is in year 12 at yeah. Newman? Newman. Newman, yeah. yeah. Um, so what was your life like in year 9 and 10? Um, I was never in... I didn't... Like, I wasn't in the CSYMA class. I wasn't... I didn't have, like, a strong faith back then. Um, but I did still like religion and, you know, I still studied and all that. And then in year 10 was when I sort of latched down and thought, yeah, I'll give it a go, you know. I was always, like, the one that was, like, don't just follow the crowd. That's sort of my piece of advice. Um, you know, if your friends, if you're in a friend group or something and they don't believe in or they laugh at you or whatever, just be yourself. You know, I went out and I did Ignite for the first time in Year 10 and I absolutely loved it. And so then I come back, I was stronger, I was more myself, I was an individual. I felt happy, non-judged, all of that. And then Year 11 I did everything and Year 12... So, yeah, I think the main piece of advice that I'd sort of give to everyone here is just to be yourself. Don't follow the crowd. Um, you're not made to be like anyone else. You're made to be an individual and just embrace that to the fullest, I reckon. Thank you so much. That was really great, guys. Um, so we're going to move on to Sister D. If you could just pass the mic. Just be mindful that Sister D is from the Philippines, so it's going to have to <laughs> excuse her accent. And everyone just really, really listen closely. <coughs> I'm so shy, listening to both of them. They're so good within grade 9 and 10, my goodness. I'm a sister, but, you know, I am doing the other thing around. So I will talk before my conversion. 
to be specific, my, uh, when I was in the age of 14, 15, 16, just like the ordinary teenager, I was into a band member. I was into a group. I was a group leader, like a sorority, sorority type. And then I always like trying to bully the teacher. So I was one of those. And I don't know. I always, oh my goodness. <laughs> and then um, I always go to the principal's office. So that's my face. <laughs> but aside from that, aside from that, maybe I don't fail because they could not also fail me because at least somehow I have also good grades. But yeah, that is when it comes to character, uh, um, do not mind the character itself. But then aside from that, I was also a um, youth leader in our parish. I was into a youth leader because I, I was involved in the youth ministry because my friends are there. And of course, boys are there, you know. <laughs> Settle down. I remember what my parents always told me, especially my dad. They always told me, learn to love yourself. It means to say, learn to respect one another, learn to be patient, learn to have a goal. And then indeed, that was really also one of my conversion because at that time, I was in my fourth year, graduating time. Then one of my groups, one of my friends, um, they were caught in the class. So they stayed in one of the vacant rooms, and they were having that drinking session. And it's so timely that I was not there, because I have to defend my thesis. And then at that time, I realized it's good to have friends. It's good to be the leader of the group. But it's also good to choose to be whom to be with. And then that is also the time I said, now I think I have to follow my parents. I learned to have a goal. I learned to have a purpose and meaning in life. I have to search what is really the real meaning of life? What is really my goal? What is really my mission? Why I am here? And because of that experience, now I am here in front of you, wearing this veil. Thank you. Thank you so much, sister. Um, what I really took away from that is like, yeah, you can like stray away from the path a little bit and you know, I guess be a little bit rowdy, but it's always good to come back to your roots and give yourself a goal and somewhere to go in life and, you know, find the meaning. So thank you so much, sister. So we're moving on to Alex, who is a teacher here at St. Joel... Son yes, no, Macaulay. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Macaulay. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so Alex, um, how, was, how was life in Year 9 and 10 for you? Um, yeah, so Year 9 and 10, um, even though it might not look like it, uh, Year 9 and 10 was a few years ago. Um, so I guess um, for me, my time in Year 9 and 10 wasn't, wasn't the greatest. Um, I, I had a pretty rough time. Um, Family-wise, I was, I was at home. Uh, I was sort of at home. All my brothers had moved out and I was... Um, essentially caring for my mum, um, who was doing a pretty rough trot. So, especially year, year nine, I was really lost. I had no sense of direction. Um, I had no guidance. I was, there was no real future. I, I couldn't see past what was there. You know, I was doing things that I shouldn't have been doing. I was experiencing things that you shouldn't be probably experiencing. Um, and it was just a, a really rough trot. So, you know, like I said, it, the future for me, I didn't picture myself, you know, having to move in with foster parents. I didn't picture myself going to uni. I didn't picture myself meeting my beautiful wife. I didn't picture myself becoming a teacher and, and doing something that I absolutely love. 
I didn't picture myself finding my faith, walking um, with Jesus throughout my life. And I just didn't see what was there. So for me, year nine and ten was essentially a, a stepping stone for something else, for something more. And it was that, those years, and looking back, I actually can't really remember a lot of it. I just remember how bad it was. Um, it was what really guided me for more and wanted me to strive for more. So I guess if I could say just one thing, it's not where you are now, it's where you can be. And looking back now, I think that's what I take away from those years. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just hearing what Zach, Olivia, um, and Sister D and Alex had to say, it's just bringing me back to something that I got from Lead this year. It was a little card, and I don't, I don't know what part of the Bible it's from, so I'm not going to try and remember. But it says, um, God didn't bring you this far to leave you. And I just think that if we take that with us, like even if you're going through a tough time and even if you're struggling heaps, there's more ahead. There's, like, there's light at the end of the tunnel and there's something better to come. Like God is always going to be there for you and he's always going to be there when it's in the bad or, or the good. So, yeah, thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate hearing all of your stories. <laughs>